What are we talking about? Hey, Sledders, welcome to another episode of Sledhead 24-7, the show about everything snowmobile. I'm your host, Carly Applin, and on today's episode, we have a lot to cover. So let's start it off with some 2015 sled evaluations. Now, these aren't your typical sleds. These are the workhorses of the industry, made to get the job done. We're already evaluating the utility class and we really have a mixed bag here. We've got a little bit of everything to cover everyone's likes here. Starting with the ski Doo Tundra Extreme, we've got the new Polaris Indie Voyagers, all about flotation, all about getting on top of the snow. The Viking RS Professional, this thing has been tried and true. We've been riding this thing for years, Fish. No, it hasn't. It is a great sled, but don't forget about Articat's Bearcat Groomer Special with the light and the groomer drag, and of course, Skidoo's Expedition. And that thing's where luxury meets utility. These things can do it all. You're going to be amazed. Utility class to me, I think workhorse, you know, for the guy going ice fishing, hauling, moving stuff around the farm, moving stuff around his cabin, whatever it takes, a workhorse. I mean, these things are absolutely made to work with, uh, whether that be, you know, towing, hauling, uh, you know, they still have some luxury items. Really just something that I had never had the experience to ride before, so I was super stoked. I think it's for pulling ice houses, it's for hauling heavy stuff. You know, if you still think that, after watching these snowmobiles and watching what they can do, shock therapy is still an option. <laughs> Skidoo's Tundra Extreme. I don't quite categorize that as utility class personally, because you know what? I consider that a little mini summit. And this sled was amazingly fun in the trees. Uh, I would have no issue whatsoever grabbing it on a day just to go actually play with it. Its individuality is so incredible because you can go off trail. It isn't just for hauling heavy loads. I think it's going to be for the person who wants to get stuff to their cabin via a tow behind sled, but then also get to go play after they're done. They put the summit running board so that it gets rid of that snow real easy. They put a forward steering post and then they topped it off with a two and a quarter track. You know, it's definitely a sled that you would be classified to buy. It's not something that the average person would just go out and purchase. Although I think that the average person could just go purchase it and ride it and have fun. The Articat Bearcat Groomer Special. All my friends want to follow me because I make a smooth path for them. There again, this sled is like nothing else. There's nothing to really compare it to. Uh, this sled was designed for one or two things in general, and it would do those one or two things incredibly. It'll groom a trail. It'll, it'll pull heavy loads. It comes with the Warren winch. Think about it by yourself. If you get one of these stuck, they're very heavy. 20 inch wide tracks, you're not gonna get it out. Without that worn winch, you're stuck there until you get help or a helicopter, whichever comes first. There's controls right on the dash to run the groomer, so it's all electronic. It's not fast by any means, it's a work sled. It does that exceptionally. The Polaris 550 Indy Voyager with the 155 track, this thing is light, it's nimble, it's quiet, this snowmobile is really made for somebody that wants to go in for the first time and break trail. You can take this one to your cabin, get your gear there, unload, and then go play. It's a little deceiving when you're riding it because you look down and you see these big wide skis, but they work. That thing stays on top and has flotation that is absolutely second to none. It's a 550 fan, but it has incredible flotation. The Yamaha Viking RS Professional, a tried and true machine. And this machine's been around for three years now. 12 volt outlets, nice big tall windshield, very protective. Uh, it's the only car rated model we rode today in the utility class. I mean, it does have high low range, so you put it in low and you can pull pretty much whatever you want. It, it does work and it's proved itself. I mean, that's why they kept it in the rotation for the last two or three years. Ski Doo Expedition SE with a 900 Ace. That is the absolute Cadillac Escalade of all utility snowmobiles. What's really cool about this machine this thing is filled with all kinds of extras. You have a high low range, so if you're towing, you can be in first gear. You have second gear when you want to get out and haul the mail. The seat was incredibly comfortable. Uh, that seat worked out super well for me sitting down. Standing up, it's a little bit wide, but this sled isn't designed for the stand-up rider. I mean, it, it has every feature. 
I don't think that there's anything that that is probably missing. For more on these sleds, make sure to check out the OEM's websites. Awesome deals and great offers await. Still ahead on Sledhead 24-7, we highlight the best of Rob and Dave. Plus, find out what's new at Polaris Racing and how racer Ross Martin is preparing this summer for the upcoming snowcross season. Stay tuned. Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Polaris, terrain domination. Skidoo Snowmobiles. And by Articat, share our passion. Welcome back to Sled Ed 24-7. I'm your host, Carly Applin. Now, every season, engineers in the snowmobile industry are working hard to develop the next best thing. And Polaris is breaking ground with their new lightweight crankshaft, delivering response like no other. Take a look. So one of the questions I get a lot is, how are Polaris so dominant on their hole shots? Rider Green is out here. We go to turn one. They're four, five, six wide, two wide now through the corner. Look at Carlson. Carlson working. The For 2014, uh, we came out with a brand new lightweight crankshaft. Two and a half pounds lighter than the previous crankshaft. Uh, it really woke our engine up. Well, you hit the throttle, that lightweight crankshaft just takes off, kicks in. Um, it's less rotating mass, creating more horsepower, and it will throw out of your arms. It's, it's pretty incredible. We dominated the hole shots in Pro Open. I think we had 10 of 17 in the finals. Uh, Pro Light, I think we got every single hole shot. We won all 16 Pro Light finals, uh, and we had great success in the sport class. Uh, with hole shots and won that championship also. It seemed like every time uh, the stock sleds were on the line, you know, a Polaris was getting a start. Um, that's going to be huge for me going into the Pro Open class, you know, looking forward to being out in front early and really picking off some good laps. That lightweight crankshaft for sure made our job a lot easier to rip the hole shot. What I found is in the Pro class, it's so critical to get a hole shot because just being up there, having clear vision right off the bat, and not having to eat roost or snow dust. And it really allows you to gap yourself from the rest of the field. It's, it's an advantage that if you're a racer, you can absolutely relate to. It's, it's a must have. I mean, you watch any, any racing sport, you know, being up front right off the bat is, is key. You know, if you're out front and you got all them fast guys behind you, you know, it, it makes it way easier on yourself, you know, just clear track and, you know, just, just going for it right off the bat. Definitely helped, and uh, all the testing and stuff paid off for sure. One of the cool things about that crankshaft is it's now available in the 2015 new 800 Clean Fire engines. I mean, if this is working for the race department and these sleds can take this kind of beating, they want to use that in their consumer sleds. So for 2015, we have a new 800 Clean Fire HO engine, and this thing is really amazing. It pulls like a freight train, but it's very refined. Um, new features that it brings, lightweight crankshaft, better intake and exhaust breathing, so get some uh, boost there. Uh, new port timing, uh, electronically controlled exhaust valve with three positions, very, very good for uh, run quality and also for fuel economy. And then the lightweight crank is just incredible for acceleration. We have an electronic oil pump that reduces throttle effort. And uh, where riders really going to feel this thing pull is in that trail range. Around 5,000 RPM, the thing is just going to be a rocket. And when you combine that with about a 38 pound weight reduction, the uh, improvement in acceleration and just the feel is just phenomenal. With the all new Axis chassis, the lightweight crankshaft, and the new HO engine, I believe Polaris is going to reveal something totally new this season. So keep it locked right here to Sledhead 24 7 for the latest and the greatest in the world of snowmobile. Still ahead, Rob Kincaid and Dave McClure have been working hard these past few years making moves. We rewind and highlight some of their best moments. Plus, ride along with Ross the Boss Martin at his home in Wisconsin. Stay tuned. 
Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by Stud Boy. Traction with an attitude. Straight line performance. Ziegler Cat. Exceptional service backing the best equipment. The U.S. Air Force. Aim high. And by Speedworks. Straight up USA horsepower. Welcome back to Sledhead 24-7, where we are everything snowmobile. For the past couple of years, we've had the opportunity to work with Articad Hill Climb Racers and backcountry athletes Rob Kincaid and Dave McClure. And let me tell you, it is never a dull moment. I know we were sitting in West Yellowstone and the dudes, like, were eating breakfast and me and Rob and Jeremy and guys are like, you're the guy from Sledhead 24-7 to Jeremy. Yeah. They didn't even know who Rob and I were. <laughs> We're like, Whoa. Hopefully we can change that around, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello everybody, my name is Rob Kincaid. I'm part of the Arctic Cat race team and Team Arctic. Hey Dave. Can you can you keep it down out there? Well we're trying to do an interview here and you're making noise like a woodpecker. So my name is Rob Kincaid. I ride snowmobiles, part of the Arctic Cat race team, and part of the Arctic Cat backcountry team. My name is David McClure. I'm from Swan Valley, Idaho. I'm a factory Arctic Cat hill climb racer and backcountry rider. Yo, 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 yo. As many of you might not know, but me, there's quite an age separation between me and Dave. Trying to get every advantage I can to you know, stay a little bit ahead of you. I see you've already got them on your sled, so you know what's up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was the first one to put those ones on my sled. Yeah, it's always you, you know, even though I'm 15 years older than you, you're twice as smart. You new kids, you're a bunch of know-it-all suckers, so. Yo. Pretty cool. I, I won't get beat by a 42-year-old man, and he won't let the punk kid beat him, so it works, you know, we're always pushing each other to get better. I kind of am always telling Dave, don't drop that cliff, dude. Don't hit it. Don't hit the Cornish. You're, you're dumb. You're going to wreck. What if you get hurt? And Dave's more, ah, it's, I don't care. It's easy, you know. And so we kind of got the old man and the little boy syndrome going on a lot. <laughs> I'm coming at you, Dave. Hey, old man, settle down, settle down. <laughs> Rocky Mountain Rum. He's definitely a one of a kind type kind of guy, you know. Right? Bling's cool. Hey, I would say it's safe to say mine looks about ten and a half times better than yours. <laughs> no. So we've got this ungrowing passion for competition with each other and it just it goes through everything. Look guys, look guys, I'm in this bag. Like, yeah, you don't care about the I didn't magazine. say one word about it. <laughs> no. Just <laughs> tore your ass up. Somebody else in the limelight now. No, you it goes that. through everything, whether we're out mountain biking, wakeboarding, anything we're doing, we're always at each other's throat. Can you go over there and visit? I gotta, I'm I working gotta over here. Sled, make sure you're not well, do it from off. over there. I've been trying to work. He's not much as a rider. We just keep him around for like the entertainment. So you're more of a rider or what? No, I'm, I'm a do-it-all guy. Are you? Mechanic, yeah, do-it-all. You didn't get, probably get to open much Christmas presents as a kid. I see you're struggling with that plastic. Uh, yeah, we're good friends. We, uh, we ride all the time together. We got a lot of the same hobbies, a lot of the same interests. But at the same token, we're, we're totally different. You know, I'm more conservative and, you know, just quiet. He's outspoken and loud. And so I don't know. I don't know why our relationship really works that way, but it's, it's fun. We, we have a lot of fun together. But if Rodney asks me questions, how the hell do you edit that? You've got to ask the questions a because sea of lies oh. right here. I see you lies. Well, my average day when I wake up in the morning is I call up my buddy Dave, and usually it snows every night, so we want to be the first ones out on the snow every morning. Kind of like being a coyote, you go out and pee on your post. And... It's like a love hate relationship, me and Rob, you know, like we're going to be here for like seven days, I think, that we're hanging out solid together. And prior to those seven days, we had to like take like three days where we didn't even talk to each other so we could like stand each other. And... After two days at this pool, I'm ready to whoop his ass. It's about had it. 
this heat. He wakes up in the morning just talking. Just, it's like nonstop. Just. Those boys never seem to stop. Good old mountain boys just having fun. For more information on Rob and Dave, make sure to check out our past episodes at sledhead24-7.com. But wait until after the show, because I'm pretty sure if you go check it out, you won't come back to us. Still ahead, Ross Martin has been busy this summer preparing for the upcoming snowcross season. Will he race a full season, or does he have other plans? Find out next, right here on Sledhead 24-7. Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Arctic FX Graphics, make it yours. Fox, redefining ride dynamics. And by FXR, world-class outerwear. Welcome back, I'm your host, Carly Applin. Jednick Motorsports number 837, Ross Martin has been hard at it this summer, preparing for the Amsoil Championship Snowcross Tour powered by Ram. We caught up with Ross earlier this season at his home in Wisconsin. I'm Ross Martin, number 837 on a Polaris, and I race for Judnick Motorsports. Over the flyaway for the last time, he makes that big sweeping turn around the FXR corner, heads for the Amzo finish line, and the boss is back! Look Ross at that. Martin <laughs> takes the win! Whatever he can do to get an advantage, whether it's in the gym or on the track or what have you, he needs to feel that he's put in the work to, to go out and beat everybody else on the track. I live in Burlington, Wisconsin. I got a house and 20 acres. One side of the property, I got a dirt bike track. And the other side of the property, I got my shop. That's kind of where I work on my bikes and uh, snowmobiles and uh, whatever needs fixing, that's, that's where it's done. And then this is my living room. This is where we watch TV in the winter time when it's super cold out. We get a fire ripping, keep it nice and toasty in here. So this is the kitchen here. This is where all the good meals are made for me to win races in the winter time. This is kind of a sunroom or, I don't know, I like to drink coffee in here. And this is, uh, this is my bedroom here. This is where the magic happens. We just turn this into our office here. So this is the garage right here. The house garage is what I like to call it. This is where all the oil is kept. Back down the hallway, then we go check out the downstairs. This is what I like to call my man cave. This is where all my trophies are kept. So each time a new Snowcross episode airs, this is kind of where I come down and watch it and see what I did wrong or right that weekend. As we go back here, this is what I like to call my gear room. Uh, I got quite the collection of helmets. I'm sure over the years I probably had double this at one point. The most memorable one, this is my first helmet ever when I started racing dirt bikes. I was nine years old and I was a rookie obviously, so I didn't didn't make it too far. I ended up crashing and breaking my helmet and I learned a lot from that mistake, but it's something I'll never get rid of. Here we are outside. It's a great day out. Uh, we're headed out to the shop now. That's where I keep the toys, work on snowmobiles, work on dirt bikes, anything that needs to be fixed, here it is. I had to go with the Polaris Ranger because that's my number one choice. Just gets me around the yard, gets the mail, follows the driveway, all that fun stuff. Yeah, man, I, I love it out here. There's just something I've always dreamed of having is my own dirt bike track and some land where I could go mess around with the skid loader. It's definitely a dream come true for me. These are my two dirt bikes here. I'd say my, one of, one of the top things I like to do other than race my player snowmobile. It's great to be a part of the development side for Polaris, knowing that we're out there racing with these new parts that are eventually gonna come on the trail sled. It's a great feeling to know that my feedback was helpful to make a Polaris trail sled a better sled for the consumer. All the people are great to work with. Anything you ask for is there the next day, and that's what it takes to win races. This is our 13th season with Polaris. I've been doing this for 18 years, and I truly believe that Judnick Motorsports wouldn't be here without Polaris. We've worked hard all summer. Our intentions are that it's not going to be the Tucker Show this year. 
We've been on his heels, we've beat him, he's beat us, we've pushed him to new levels, he's definitely pushed us to new levels, and you know, we're looking to take it to him this year. The goals for this season are definitely to stay healthy, get up on the podium each and every weekend, and win as many races as we can, and be there at the end for the championship. I saw Ross out on the practice track a couple of weeks ago and he looks faster than ever, healthy and ready to give Tucker a run for the checkers. Now here's a look at the upcoming snowcross schedule. Now that's all the time we have for you for this episode of Sledhead 24-7. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm your host, Carly Applin, and we want to remind you to introduce someone new to the sport that we all love. From all of us here at Sledhead 24-7, thanks for watching.